Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dan. This is The Crossbar, where we talk all things football on this channel, not just Chelsea. If you haven't already, make sure to drop a like. Try and get 30 likes on every video at the moment, so I think that would be unbelievable. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, because we're on the road to 3,000 subscribers before Christmas. But I want to address the elephant in the room in the majority of conversations I'm having about the Premier League title race this season. Most people think Arsenal aren't going to do it this year. They don't believe Arsenal are serious. They're saying that Arteta's playing Stoke City-like football, MS Stoke football, Paella Pulis football. Is this a ridiculous conversation or what? Let me know in the comments down below because genuinely, teams that win titles win it because of how good their defence is. I'll take you back to when Chelsea won their first one. We conceded 15 goals. John Terry and Petr Cech were unbelievable. Ricardo Carvalho, unbelievable. Jose Mourinho and his tactics are negative at times, but also at times when they needed to be, we were free-flowing and brilliant to watch. And some of you might be like, oh, that's 20 years ago, but some of the best teams in world football are still winning their titles now because of how good they are defensively. And Arsenal probably didn't win a title last season because of defensive mishaps, because of not managing games in a way that they should have been seeing out the result. They let them slip away. They conceded one too many that meant they drew instead of win. Or times when they went down to 10 men, they didn't manage their situation well during the game. These players still had slight immaturities about them. So did the manager. This season, I'm seeing something different. And I have to praise Arsenal because this is a side currently sitting in third in the Premier League. They're level on points and they, they literally haven't lost yet. And to rule out a team that haven't lost yet is crazy. They had such a difficult period a few weeks ago where they went away in the Champions League to Atalanta. They played City. They played Spurs. Some of their hardest games of the season. And they actually navigated them pretty well, considering what happened in those games. We saw against Manchester City that they gave City a really good game. City went till the very end in that game against a 10-men Arsenal side. That's how resolute Arsenal are now. We saw against Brighton, they had no option. Brighton, I'll tell you right now, they are one of the most difficult teams to play against when they go down to 10 men because they're so fluid. They make it incredibly difficult. It almost seems like they might not be down to 10 men. They're that well drilled and that well executed or they execute that fluid system so brilliantly that not much seems to change because it always feels like they have a man overload in the area they need them to. So Arsenal managed both of those games really well. But in the last couple of weeks, I think we've started to see Arsenal return a little bit more to the style of football we once saw them have under Mikel Arteta. But I, I, I believe this season that Arteta is stepping away from a priority towards nice football, towards a style of play. For so long now, we've had conversations about managers having a style of play. That's why we want them employed, because of the style of football they bring. Arteta was obviously employed for that reason as well. And ultimately, I think it's got him as far as he can go. Now, he's looking to change it up. He's looking for revenge. And we are seeing a much more measured, mature Arsenal side. And they're winning games in a different way. And I can tell you from years gone by as a Chelsea fan, from watching Manchester City, from watching Leicester's, watching Liverpool, if you're going to go and win the Premier League, you've got to be able to change it up. You've got to have something different about you. You've got to bring something else to the table. We saw for years that Arsenal were a great side. But one thing you could definitely say over the past at least 10 seasons, before the last two, is that this Arsenal side might have been too small. They were a little bit frail. They they weren't physically imposing in the in the tunnel, walking out to the game, standing on the pitch alongside them. They had small, wonderful, wonderfully te technically gifted football players. That's what they were renowned for in Wenger's later years. Under Unai Emery, that's what they wanted. They want these players that were technical. Yeah, okay, they had a few that were an exception to the rule, but on the whole, that's what they looked like as a team. Even the early years of Arteta. We, we saw an Arsenal side that was still, in my opinion, a little bit fragile to go and win the biggest trophies. Look at what Pep did to Manchester City. When he first came here, 
Manchester City had a lot of smaller players that were very technically good, but weren't physically imposing. Now look, players in that Manchester City side are absolute mountains. I'm looking at John Stones, I'm looking at Rodri, I'm looking at Erling Haaland, Edison the keeper, you, Akanji, Vardio, these are players you don't want to play against, players that make your afternoon incredibly difficult if they can beat you physically in terms of strength in the duels, jumping when they go to win their battles in the air. You know, you go shoulder to shoulder with them, they push you off the ball. Those are the sort of things that are sometimes overlooked with the stats, in my opinion. And they're the sort of things that win your trophies. I think back to some of the best Chelsea sides in years gone by. John Terry, Gary Cahill, David Luiz's, Nemanja Matic, Drogba, K, uh, sorry, Costa. Players that you just didn't want to spend your Saturday afternoon playing against. And that is the sort of thing that Arsenal have been adding to their squad in recent years. Declan Rice. I look at their defence. William Saliba. I look at Gabriel. I look at players like Calafuri have just come in. Marino, Kai Havertz. These are big, tall players that whether you like it or not, add something extra to the team. And we're going to look into it in a little bit more detail because Arsenal are definitely a team to be concerned about this season. Look, they are third in the Premier League. They've had two draws against Brighton and against Manchester City. They haven't lost yet. They've scored 15 goals. I think that's like the third best in the league there, looking at that table quickly. They're on 17 points. I think I said level earlier. They're only one behind the top of the table. They look absolutely fantastic. They are a team to be concerned about because I'll bring up this graphic here. Look at how many of these players are influential in their team that are absolute units. 185 is Ben White, their right back. How many teams in the Premier League have a player of that size playing at right back? Then look at look through this list. Tommy Yasu can come can come in and cover defensively. Calafuri is playing left back. He's one eight eight. Thomas Partey's playing more games this season than Arsenal probably thought he would. The guy is not afraid of the physical battle. Kivior comes in and defends and covers when he's needed to and relied upon. The guy's a unit as well. Mikel Marino, just imported from Spain, looks like a fantastic player with his feet, but is another player that you wouldn't want to be marking in the penalty area. You wouldn't want to be going shoulder to shoulder. Well, I say that with Mikel Marino. Maybe his shoulder's a little bit fragile at the moment. But you know what I mean? Declan Rice is a fantastic player technically very good, brings a lot to this Arsenal side, is capable of dropping deeper and defensively into more of a centre-back role now with the fluidity that Calafuri and other players are adding to this Arsenal side. You know, Declan Rice absolutely like transcends what I think Arteta wants this Arsenal side to be. Declan Rice is the sort of player that is an absolute engine, is a physical presence on the football pitch and is technically top at the very highest level of the game. I look at Gabriel and William Saliba, probably the best defensive partnership in the league. They've looked fantastic for a couple of seasons now. They are unbelievably good in both boxes. They are serious, serious players. Gabriel, for me, is underrated. I think he's only just starting to get his credits purely because of the amount of goals he's scored. But I've been saying for a while now that this is the best centre-back in the league, if not one of them. I think he is that good. And Kai Havertz, a player that so many people doubted. I hate to sit here and tell you I told you so about how Kai Havertz would perform at Arsenal, but the video's here on my channel. I told you when he left Chelsea how good he could potentially be for them, and he's absolutely doing that right now. And players that aren't on this list are absolutely fantastic as well, and their game isn't so much based around winning ugly and a physicality. They're, they're beautiful technicians. Odegaard, Saka, Trossard, they're great players that I'm sure will be just as key to Arsenal's success that I'm sure they will get. At one point in time this season or the next, I believe Arsenal will win a major trophy. And it, and it worries me, obviously, as a Chelsea fan, because I don't want to see Arsenal winning trophies. But this is a side not to be ignored. Look at this. This is what I'm saying about Arsenal changing things up. Set pieces, since since the start of last season, Arsenal have scored the most. When you look at other teams around them, and you look at the teams 
that you'd expect to be scoring from set pieces. Everton do jump to mind. Manchester City, already a team of absolute monsters, jumps to mind. Newcastle, you've got the likes of Dan Byrne, Botman. You've got huge, huge players in that side. All Liverpool, in the title race as well, absolute units stepping up from the back in Virgil van Dijk, Canate. These teams have all got that, and I think for a few years, Arsenal didn't. And Arteta, along with his set-piece coach that he's absolutely praised to the highest level, saying that he's potentially one of the best in the world to do his job. They are a team to be concerned about this season because their numbers are only getting better. Every time Arsenal get a set piece, it almost feels like it's a penalty. It almost feels like they could score. We know they're that good. And one player in particular, like I've already mentioned, has been absolutely crucial to this and it's Gabriel. Look at the names of the players that he is completely outscoring since the start of the 21-22 season. Like, these are absolute top of the tree when it comes to set pieces, and he is almost doubling some of these players. Romero, we know he's very good attacking set pieces. Defensively, hmm. Virgil van Dijk, Fabian Schaar, these guys are renowned from scoring from set pieces. Ben Mee has been doing it for years, whether it was at Burnley, Brentford, we know how good he is at doing it as well. Gabriel, though, is an absolute level above these guys for me at set pieces and he's found a way Arteta of making this guy as lethal as pretty much anyone in the box from set pieces but also defensively he attacks the ball in such a way that is so so good another thing I want to point out about Arsenal is that the way they set up from their attacking corners is so good that defensively they're never vulnerable you know how many times teams get corners or attacking set pieces, don't win their header, and then they're counter-attacked upon? That's gone from this Arsenal team right now. I very rarely see Arsenal be counter-attacked against from their attacking corners. Their, defend their defensive duties are carried out to almost perfection from their attacking corners. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you look at how they set up and how many teams do look vulnerable from their attacking corners... Arsenal have removed that. And these are the sort of things, and I focused on set pieces because I believe they're so, so good at them. But these are the hallmarks of teams that are good enough to go and win trophies. I genuinely believe Arteta's matured so much over the last sort of season and definitely over the summer in a way that he's changing it up and he's going about it in a slightly different way. And to do that tells me that he's hungrier than ever and he wants revenge. And this is an Arsenal side to be worried about. I'm not sat here telling you right now they're going to go and win the league because beating Manchester City, whether they've got Rodri or not, is incredibly difficult. Liverpool have got that winning mentality. Half those players have won the Champions League and the Premier League. But this Arsenal side are more prepared now than ever. And last season, I thought that they might do it. And they were my favourites to go and do that. And they missed out ever so slightly on, on the smallest of hiccups. Believe me, those hiccups will be eradicated this season. This title race could be the closest one yet. And mark my words, do not rule Arsenal out of this title race just yet. Look, if you like the video, make sure to subscribe. More football content about the general Premier League and Europe is coming to the channel. If you want to tune into that, do so. The Chelsea content isn't going anywhere either. I try to provide an unbiased opinion when I'm talking about other teams, as I know some people aren't able to do that. But look, drop a like on the video. We are on our way to 3,000 subscribers before Christmas. This community is unbelievable. The chats I have with some of you guys in the comments and when we go live is, is so, so enjoyable. It's absolutely a pleasure of mine to keep doing it. I will catch you in the next one in a bit.